So in this section, we get to talk about Avogadro's number and the mole. So if you've taken chemistry before and you've heard about the mole and it didn't really make sense to you, don't worry about it. It doesn't, it don't make it harder than it has to be. So think about a mole like a dozen of something. If I said I have a dozen eggs, you'd say, oh, that's 12 eggs. Or if I had a dozen pencils, you know that that's exactly 12 pencils. A mole is very similar to that. So if I had one mole of carbon, I, one mole of yep, carbon 12, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 um, atoms of carbon in that one mole. Or if I had one mole of marbles, it would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, marbles. It's just a number. It's Avogadro's number, right? That's how many anythings there are in one mole. That's all the mole is. It's a collective term. Now it's based off of carbon. So if I were to weigh out exactly 12 grams of isotopically pure carbon 12. So that means, remember how we have isotopes and we have like carbon 12, we have carbon uh, 13, we have different um, isotopes of carbon. If we just had carbon 12 and we weighed out exactly 12 grams of it, that would be one mole. And I would have exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon in it. Um, so mole is going to be really useful for us because it's it's going to be uh, easier to talk about one mole of carbon than 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. Just an easier term to uh, to talk about, and we'll we'll see it more when we start balancing equations um, and and interpreting these balanced equations. So molar mass is the amount of is the, is the mass of one mole of a substance. So usually we we put this in grams per mole. So for carbon, there's 12 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. This is going to be a really good conversion factor when we want to convert between grams and moles. Um, let's see, so the, so the molar mass, we're going to be able to find that for an element in the periodic table. So let's go back to our periodic table and you can see here, here's carbon. So carbon here says 12.011. 12 12 um, before we were calling that atomic mass units. That's how many, uh, that's 12.011 atomic mass units is how many uh, is the mass of one atom of carbon. But if you had a whole uh, one mole of carbon, that's how many grams it would be. So this is how many grams per mole. So it's, if you're looking at that going, wait, we're using the same number we are, but we're talking about different things. We're talking about um, a mole of something. So 12.011 grams, that's how many grams of carbon there are in one mole or that's how many atomic mass units there are in one atom. One atom is really, really small. You're never gonna weigh out one atom on a balance, um, but you can weigh out one mole of something because that would be, you know, if I weighed out exactly 12.011 grams of carbon, just a sample of carbon, not isotopically pure. So why is that different? Why isn't it just 12 grams? Um, why is it 12.011? It's because you have, in any sample of carbon, you're gonna have a mixture of isotopes. You're gonna have all different types of isotopes of that carbon. So they're not each each atom is not going to weigh exactly the same. But if you had isotopically pure, so if you just had one isotope of carbon-12, then it would weigh exactly 12 grams for one mole. So to find the molar mass of a molecule or even an ionic compound, um, what we're going to do is look at uh, the Right, this is the same process that we did before, but now instead of talking about uh, atomic mass units or one, um, one molecule, this we can calculate how many uh, one mole. So how many grams per mole would we have? The molar mass is grams per mole. The process is exactly the same, so it just scales up. So if I have six carbons, right, I have 12.01. Now my units are grams per mole because I'm looking for the molar mass. Molar mass is grams per mole, not um, the formula weight. Of, of one molecule or one formula unit. 12, 1.01 1 .01 grams per mole. And so again, I'm just reading those numbers right out of the periodic table. I'm just changing the units because now instead of talking about one atom, I'm talking about one mole. And that's how many grams one mole is for each one of these elements. And this one's just 16. So when you work all that out, you end up getting 180.18 grams per mole. All right. So again, grams per mole, that's if I were to weigh out 180.18 grams of glucose, I know I have one mole. Or if I was looking for one mole of glucose, 
that's how much it would weigh that many and that's a lot of atoms so this this um, chart down here kind of helps you convert so you weigh out things in grams you can use molar mass grams to moles to convert it to moles and then we know a relationship between moles we know how many formula units or how many atoms are in one mole it's Avogadro's number so you can go from grams to moles using molar mass moles to formula units or atoms using Avogadro's number and that's kind of the molar mass is kind of like the bridge between the molecular scale and the real world